I gotta say, Oculus are absolutely crushing it right now. In the last six months since the Oculus Quest 2's release, it's propelled itself to become the most popular VR headset available on the market today. Not only has the Quest 2 outsold all of the previous headsets from Oculus individually, but it's actually outsold all of them combined, which is completely insane. And it's not just the most popular standalone VR headset available right now, although admittedly there is no competition. It's also the number one headset of choice for Steam VR users using Oculus Link and Virtual Desktop, accounting for a whopping 24% of all Steam VR users using a Quest 2 to play PC VR content on the Steam platform. And it seems that Oculus have no plans of slowing down, as we have three big new features that are starting to roll out this week in the latest update version 28. We have 120Hz mode, Oculus Air Link, and updates for Infinite Office, which I'm going to be talking about in this video. Just note that this update, like all Quest updates, is going to be a gradual rollout, so it can be a bit random as to when you'll actually get the update yourself, and just know that I feel your pain as I'm in the same boat as you are. I'll add a link to the official Oculus blog post in the description down below if you want to go and check it out for yourself. It's kind of funny because I noticed something familiar in that blog post. I'm watching you, Oculus. That's my line. So, without further ado, let's dive in. So the first feature in update version 28 has been rumored to be in the works for some time now, and that is 120 hertz mode. Originally, when the Quest 2 launched, it was locked to 72 hertz, but quickly got updated to support 90 hertz in the main menu area, and in some games that were able to support it, like Echo VR, Red Matter, and Vacation Simulator, for example. Well, now Oculus are offering developers the option to enable 120 hertz mode in games that have the performance headroom to increase the refresh rate. Having tried higher refresh rates with 120 hertz mode and even 144 hertz mode with the Valve Index, from my experience, it makes the VR gamer experience feel much smoother and more responsive. This makes a big difference, particularly in fast-paced Twitch reaction games like Beat Saber, for example, and can also help out those who are sensitive to motion sickness. Once you have the latest update version 28, you'll find the 120Hz mode toggle in the Experimental Features menu, and once enabled, all future supported games will run in 120Hz mode, although unfortunately, no games are officially supported at the time of this video, but I'm sure we'll see plenty of updates from developers adding support over the coming weeks and months. Let me know what games you'd like to see get 120Hz support in the comments down below. Personally, I'd love to play Beat Saber and Pistol Whip at 120 frames per second natively on the Quest, so I have my fingers crossed for both of those titles. Oculus Link will also be getting a 120Hz mode, but this will be coming in a future update. And talking about Oculus Link, that brings me nicely onto the next feature. Now, Oculus Link has been a feature of the original Oculus Quest and Quest 2 for some time, and it allows you to connect your headset to a gaming PC to play PC VR content from both Oculus and Steam VR using a cable. Now, Oculus even sold their own official Link cable at 79 US dollars, or you could roll the dice and buy some third-party solutions, which were much, much cheaper. Oculus Link has been a bit hit and miss for me in terms of performance since its release, so using Virtual Desktop wirelessly has been my go-to solution of choice. Virtual Desktop works so well in fact that I generally choose to use the Quest 2 to play PC VR games wirelessly over using the wired Valve Index. Being wireless playing games like Half-Life Alex is truly awesome. I can't recommend it enough. And as we know, just recently, Oculus allowed the PC VR streaming functionality of Virtual Desktop to be part of the official app available on the Oculus Store, where previously you had to sideload the PC VR streaming patch for Virtual Desktop using the likes of SideQuest. It seems that that move was because they had their own wireless PC VR streaming functionality in the works with Oculus Air Link, and it would have been seen as anti-competitive to block out an application that essentially offers the same functionality. Oculus Air Link will launch as an experimental feature on Oculus Quest 2. There's no indication that this will be available on the original Quest at the moment, so Virtual Desktop will still be the best option for original Quest owners. 
The obvious benefit will be that Oculus Air Link will be a free feature over Virtual Desktop's $20 price tag, but how well it will perform in comparison will be something that I'll be testing and sharing once I have access to the update. Of course, using both Oculus Air Link and Virtual Desktop require a VR-ready gaming PC, a secured good quality 5GHz Wi-Fi connection to your headset, having your router next to your play space, and having the router hardwired using an Ethernet cable to your PC for the best possible results. To get access to Oculus Air Link, you'll need the latest version 28 update on both your Oculus Quest 2 and the Oculus Desktop application. Again, I'll be covering how to set it all up in more detail with comparison of performance in an upcoming video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. And finally, we're getting some features which are part of Oculus's plans for Infinite Office, a collection of features built into Oculus Home designed to make working in VR more productive and flexible. Now, while the Quest and Quest 2 might not be the best suited headsets to spend a whole day in working in VR, it's clear that Oculus want these features in place for whatever hardware they have lined up for the future. The first feature for Infinite Office is being able to bring your desk space into the virtual world. A bit like what we saw recently with being able to bring your sofa in VR for enjoying content while seated. In the new update, you'll be able to define your desk's boundary and its location will be saved within your Guardian layout. And having your desk in VR will be useful as you'll also be able to track a keyboard in virtual reality. More specifically, the Logitech K830 keyboard, which is the only supported keyboard right now, but this can be fully tracked in VR, showing a virtual representation of the keyboard along with your hands in some kind of pass-through mode. And this together will make typing in VR much, much easier. Oculus state that they'll be supporting more keyboards in the future, but I've got one of these Logitech keyboards on order, so as soon as it arrives, I'll test it out and share with you how well it works. Obviously right now there's not much you can do with this functionality other than use the Oculus browser, but it's definitely a sign of things to come in the future. So they are the big features we can expect to see in the latest version 28 update. A solid update with plenty of cool features, although it seems like we're starting to see more updates coming exclusively to the Quest 2 that might not see the light of day on the original Quest. As we know right now, for the most part, you can still play the same games on the original Quest as the Quest 2. It just seems that you might start missing out on some of these newer features, which I think is only going to happen more and more as time goes on. In some other Oculus related news, Oculus are hosting a gaming showcase event next Wednesday on the 21st of April, where we can expect some new games to be announced along with some details on Lone Echo 2 and more content for Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge and Pistol Whip. I'm so hyped for Lone Echo 2. I feel like I've been waiting a lifetime for that game to release, so hopefully we won't have to wait that much longer. I'm going to be live streaming the event on YouTube, so feel free to come along and hang out so we can check out the event together. Also, stay tuned for another epic video that I've been working on this week, which will be going live next week. I put a pause on that video to bring you this update video today, but honestly, it's possibly one of the coolest things I've ever done in VR. A little sneak peek as a thank you for sticking around until the end of the video. Anyway, let me know what you think of these features coming in version 28 in the comments down below. Which one of these features are you most excited about? And also let me know how you feel about the gradual rollout of these updates. I find it so infuriating. <laughs> Leave a like if you found the video useful. Make sure you're subscribed for all my future VR content. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.